growing up as a kid in Chicago or in the suburbs of Chicago, um, every time we go to the city, you know, you always see the outside of the building and that was kind of the relationship I had with the building was you're going into the city and you, you see the old post office and the expressway goes underneath it. So when we were invited to actually see the interior and do the walkthroughs um, to actually beautify the space inside of it, I guess it kind of pulled at my heartstrings a little bit. The post office was built in 1921, so it's obviously a lot older of an architecture. Any designers can come into a space and take a blank palette and paint what's in their head. And, um, and there's, there's an art form to that as well. But what's crazy about this kind of project is going into a building and using, using the time of the building and using the bones of the building and the structure and the feeling behind it and using that as a catalyst to create your design. I can't even tell you the amount of hours of engineering and design that went into this. We didn't even know if it could be done. You feel that, you feel that connection, and I felt a sense of pride and a sense of responsibility to make sure that we're giving, we're giving the attention to the space that it deserves. Months and months of engineering and routing time and just the collaboration between the different parties like the mill workers and the, uh, the construction team and I mean it had to fit to a T. This building has a voice and so this piece really allows it to talk. I mean this this space has a lot to say. You know when you look at this this project uh, in a completed state you, you know this is this is familiar territory with us. We are uh, we were given the opportunity to do some work uh, in the old post office and being such an iconic building, this particular space really tells the story of both the design side, the collaboration side, uh, the client side, and I think it's done so well. What was really neat about this particular moment is this is hand-bent neon. It's a very old-school way of doing things. And I think what it does is it, it, it brings that classic appeal to a very modern space. So in a certain way, it's a juxtaposition of old time and new time, and vintage and modern. The textures and materials that were used throughout the building are so vast and so different. I mean, there's an entire hallway uh, that has freight truck mirrors that we had to source and install all at different angles, kind of as a homage to Uber Freight. This is the Moray feature wall. This one's impressive. This one uh, is inspired solely by movement. It, it really does just that. It, nothing moves unless you move yourself. That's just fantastic. Everybody's gonna have a different experience with this wall. So one of the unique things about this particular space is, you know, originally it was gonna be a printed graphic in the background and uh, we couldn't get that color with our printers. So what we did is we used a fluorescent vinyl. And during the time that we had to do this global pandemic, global supply chain issues, we literally purchased the last fluorescent vinyl in the world, really. And it just, you can tell. 
You know, what I think this project really taught me and my team is that, you know, we definitely deserve a seat at the table. We went through just about everything you can imagine going through in a project on this scale, and, and really especially at the time that this project was kicking off. You know, all of this work and all of this effort was done at a time where we didn't even know if the office was even going to open. But now, when I sit back and I, I take a look around and, and I see the work that we've accomplished and that what we've accomplished as a team, that's it.